Hello! With this video, I'll explain how to make schematics and PCBs, particularly using the program KiCad. What is the reason for making a PCB? It's for making an electronic circuit permanent instead of temporary. If you want a permanent circuit, then a PCB is a great way to go. It's easier to solder than a perf board, and it's a good permanent solution. Originally, electronic breadboards were actually mounted on wood. That's why they called them breadboards. People would take slabs of wood, just like they'd cut a loaf of bread on, and drill holes through them to mount the components. These are pictures of early radios from the 1920s mounted on boards. The modern breadboard looks like this. It has columns and rows of holes that are connected electrically with strips of metal underneath the holes so that you can plug in components, build a circuit, and test it to see if it works before you build it permanently. So here's a picture of uh, different components mounted on a board. You can test this easily to see if it's going to work before you make a permanent circuit. Different techniques exist for mounting things. Uh, one of the original techniques was called wire wrapping. You just wrap the individual wires from the components around the metal posts. They don't require soldering. And it's used somewhat today, but mostly by hobbyists, not, not used very much anymore. Uh, a lot of hobbyists use perf board. These are just fiberglass boards with copper pads that you can solder to, drilled through the boards. And these can be used to make a permanent solution, but they're a little more difficult. You put the components on one side and then you solder the other side, but it can be a little bit difficult to solder. Sometimes you get unintended solder bridges, but they're not the best solution to making a circuit permanent. Printed circuit boards are really fabulous for a permanent circuit. There's different kinds of components. Notice. On the left, it shows two different kinds of components that can be mounted on printed circuit boards. One is called a through-hole component because the components have leads that you poke through the holes and then solder to the opposite side of the board. That's an older style, still used extensively though. Newer electronics, often done by robotics, is surface mount technology. These are very small components that are mounted on one side of a board and soldered in place. They don't have any leads that stick through. And with these, you can get much smaller circuits. You can get the circuits to take much smaller spaces. So for modern electronics, manufactured robotically uses a lot of surface mount technology. And so when you order components, when you order the parts, or you're building your circuit design, uh, you'll see these terms THT, that stands for through-hole technology, or SMD, which is surface mount device. So how do you go from an idea to a product? It's not magic, but I'll take you through the steps one at a time called workflow steps for making a PCB. PCB stands for printed circuit board. First, you've got to select your circuit schematic. Then verify that your circuit works by breadboarding it. Then you're going to capture, or they call it capture, or it means the same as draw the schematic using a computer-aided design software program in a computer or a CAD program. And there's lots of different CAD programs. An easy one to start with with electronics is a freeware program called Express PCB. It's very simple. It doesn't have a lot of powerful tools to use in it. AutoCAD provides a program called Eagle, which is a much more powerful program. The one I'll be using is a freeware program called KiCad. It's also open source and has become a very powerful program as well. The last thing you do is use the CAD files that you've made from the computer to print or etch that PCB. You can either send the CAD files, uh, email them to a board house that are companies that have the equipment to print the boards, and then they ship them back to you. But a lot of those are uh, overseas, sometimes they're expensive, especially if you only want one board or just a few boards. Uh, obviously, the, the more you order in volume, the less expensive it's going to be but you can send those files to a board house to print those for you. Or you can print them yourself if you have the equipment to do so, a PCB printer or an etcher. So that was a big step in step number three to capture or draw the schematic using a CAD program, using KiCad. So I'm going to take you through step at a time how KiCad works. So what is KiCad? Well, it's a suite. It's actually several programs that work together. It's a suite of open source software tools for creating electronic circuit schematics and printed circuit boards. It's a free program, it's freeware, and it's open source, but it has become very powerful and can produce professional quality boards. In fact, it's so powerful, that's one of the problems, is for beginners to start learning to use it, it can seem very overwhelming. I know if you're, if you're a hobbyist, you're just getting started into this 
uh, and you're not a professional electronics technician, it can be very overwhelming. So I'm producing this YouTube video for helping my students get an introduction to it, to get started using it, and then they can continue on your own. So we are going to start with the simplest circuit just to train you how to use KiCad. So this circuit is a battery, a resistor, a potentiometer, or variable resistor, and an LED. All it is is to adjust the brightness of the LED. So here's the schematic for that. Very simple. The next step is to breadboard it out. Here's the breadboarded circuit, and I'll show you this in operation as well. Breadboarded circuit and a power supply set to 9 volts. I'm going to adjust this potentiometer so you can see that as I turn it, the LED does get brighter until it's very bright at 9 volts. So now I'm going to change that voltage down to 3 volts. If I use a button cell battery, that will be 3 volts. So again, adjusting the LED, you can see that it gets gradually brighter until it's plenty bright at 3 volts. Here's the schematic, and I've redrawn with a 3 volt source. The current in this circuit would be 13.64 milliamps, assuming the, the potentiometer is dialed completely to side 3, so all of the current goes through R1, skips the potentiometer, and then goes through the LED. And at that level of current, with 3 volts, you'd have a power of about 41 milliwatts. So our components need to be able to handle that much power and current. So I'm going to use a 220 ohm resistor instead of a 100 ohm resistor. And that should allow this circuit to function just fine with surface mount components. And now we're ready to translate our schematic to the computer. So we're going to download KiCad from the KiCad website. We'll go to KiCad.org. It uh, opens up to this page, describes a little bit about the software, schematic capturing or drawing the schematic in the computer. PCB layout, and it even has 3D viewer so you can see what your completed design will look like. Uh, we're going to do KiCad 7, it's the latest release. So click on the download button, pick your operating system, choose your download source, and it starts downloading. You can make a donation to KiCad if you want to, to help support them. Uh, once it's finished downloading, you can extract and install that where you need it on your computer. For my students, I've already downloaded KiCad and installed it on a shared drive, the R drive, that they can all access. I'll end this video here and see you in part two, Schematic Capture in KiCad, where I will explain the workflow of KiCad and how to do your schematic capture in the computer with that program. So thank you and see you in part two.